All right, folks. So today we're going to take a look at this. Uh, it's a core. It's a toroid core for a uh, ballon choke uh, to suppress common mode current. We're going to talk a little bit about how they work and what they are. Now, this is a rather simple one. Uh, I think this is somewhere around 18 gauge enamel um, coated copper core, solid core wire. And this is a ferrite toroid. It is an FT114. So that means across the diameter is 1.14 inches. And it's a mix uh, 43, which is a pretty common core that we see for these types of applications in amateur radio. There are different types of core that do different types of suppression at different levels and different frequencies. And as amateur radio operators, we design uh, cores and suppression based off of what our needs are. So what I wanted to talk a little bit was about how this core works, because uh, I had gotten a lot of comments and questions really around, you know, why do I need these? Do you really need them? And uh, I emphatically always say, yes, yes, you do. Uh, common mode cores are very important. Uh, common mode suppression is very important as amateur radio operators. And you would typically mount this in a box or you would mount this at your antenna feed point. And we do that because... We use uh, AC or alternating current um, when we use antennas. And what happens is, is that we have current that is going out and then we have a current that is coming in in an equal and uh, opposite direction. And when you have an imbalance, so your coaxial cable is an imbalance because you actually have three conductors. You have your center conductor, uh, which you would connect to one of these pins, and then that's surrounded by an insulating dielectric. Outside of that, you typically have a wire mesh braid. Um, and that braid actually trans has current that moves on both sides, the inner part of the braid and the outer part of the braid. And what can happen is, is that when your current is looking to come back, it looks for the path of least resistance. And sometimes that's on the outside of the shield. Sometimes it's on the inside of the shield. Sometimes it's on both. So the way that we make this core is, is that when we have current that's going out and we have current that's coming in in equal magnitudes, what happens is, is that the reactance of this core cancels the current coming in the other direction out. So if you have current that's going like this, the reactance of this core stops. But if you have an imbalance where you have more current on the braid of your shield, the outer braid of the shield, shield what will happen is, is that you'll get more reactants on one side of this core and it will attenuate that signal. So what I want to do today is I want to use my Nano VNA and we'll connect this up so you can see how well it attenuates across the band of frequencies or a spectrum of frequencies, I should say. And then what we'll do is we'll hook this core up so that there's a signal going through both sides of it. When we do that, you'll see how we have equal and opposing current and there is no or minimal attenuation or loss. And then when we just use one of these windings, you'll be able to see that there is what we would consider significant, up to 25 dB of, uh, of loss at certain frequencies. So let me go ahead and get this set up and uh, we'll take a look and see what we find. So I wanted to show how we connect this. So we're gonna use these alligator connectors that feed into this coaxial cable. This coaxial cable is what we're gonna connect. And that's, there we go. We're gonna to connect to our nano VNA. If I wanna send um, a current through both windings of this core, what I do is I set it up this way. If I don't, and I just want to test the uh, attenuation problem of an unbalanced signal, what I do is I just do this and short that out. And then that way we have some current that's running through the core and then some current that's not. And I just wanted to show you that so you have this and you can replicate this test on your own if you choose to. Okay, so what we can see here is a sweep that I did and we started down at the 80 meter band and we go through the 10 meter band and we have a variety of data points along the way. I believe it's six of them and we'll take a look at them, but you can see the attenuation that we get when we're running in imbalanced mode. So this is where I have the center conductor running through the core and I have the shield shorted out. And then you can see the amount of attenuation or loss that we would get in terms of suppressing common mode current. And uh, just running through it real quick, we take a look at data point number one and our S21 gain, so what we did here was an S21 gain measurement. We shoot a signal out of the tiny SA through the core and then back into the tiny SA. And 80 meters is our lowest amount or our highest amount, depending upon your perspective. But we are negative 22.58 dB. You can see all the data in the table in the center part of the screen. So I'm not going to read through all of that. 
but it takes a really big dip once we get down to around 15 meters and 12 meters and then into the 10 meter band. And at marker number six, when we take a look at that, our, our S21 gain is negative 29.559. And so there's a little bit of debate here. A lot of folks say that you want to be right around 25 uh, dB down, so negative 25. Some folks say 20 is fine. Some folks say you got to be a 30. I think 25 is a pretty good reference point. That's what we strive for. That said, in bands lower than uh, 80 meters, we would probably not see the common mode suppression that we would want out of this particular core and would look for a core of a different mix. But uh, what I want to do now is I'm going to set this as my current reference. And then I am going to connect both sides of the core so we're in balanced mode. And we're going to run the sweep again. Okay, our sweep's done. And when we take a look at this, the, the balanced mode run that we did is represented in kind of like an olive green color. And our reference from the unbalanced is in the blue. And then you can see there's a significant difference. Um, that said, at 80 meters, we had about negative 0.421 dB of insertion loss. That's what you would call this right now. And that continues to drop down all the way through 10 meters. Um, at 10 meters, we have negative uh, 2.360. So that's what I would call a pretty significant amount of loss. So while we see good attenuation there, we also may want to look for a little bit of a different core at higher frequencies, um, usually starting around 20, uh, 20 meters or above. But what it, we see here is an illustration of in a balanced mode, you have significantly less attenuation than you do in an unbalanced mode. The common mode current that we typically see on the outside of the shield would be treated as unbalanced current, and that would be attenuated and it would prevent that common mode current from coming back into your shack wrecking havoc, causing problems potentially on your transmission line, and even potentially giving you a little bit of a shock or a jolt when you touch your equipment. Okay, one other demonstration that I wanted to show is that we have our LC meter here, and I love this LC meter. It's so handy for building antennas. Anyhow, we have it set to measure inductance, and we have our positive and our negative leads connecting to, oh, now we're getting an over range reading, connecting to our toroidal core, and the signal is going through both sides. So ideally what's happening is, is that it's canceling the induction out. And then we just have the end of this uh, device that I put together here, shorted out so the signal passes. And what we can see there is around two point something uh, microhenries, and we measure inductance in terms of microhenries. And that's gonna bounce around a little bit and my hands are definitely gonna cause a little bit of an impact on there. Um, but you can see it changing around. Now what I want to do is I want to disconnect this and I want to show what happens when we just connect through an unbalanced just through one side. And then you'll see the induction change on the core. I'm making this look a lot harder than it needs to be. And then you can see that the induction for one side of the core is somewhere around 53 point something micro Henry's. Hopefully that helps explain a little bit about how these things work and how they do what they do and why they're important uh, in your antenna system. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching, everybody. Totally appreciate it.